Hello. And it says we are live. Oh. Should we check the stream, Dad? Or yeah. refresh it, refresh it. All right, let's try this again. You have to close the app. You have to close the app and then do that. There you go. <laughs> Dad's just doing this. He has the iPhone 11, so it's just touch things all that time. Oh, yeah. I love that you guys are doing this together, by the way. I think that's really cool. Oh, yeah, Thanks, dude. Man. We yeah. had this idea a long time ago, man. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, I'll check on mine. Yours is probably outdated. Yes. Oh, there we go. There we go. I got the live thing. Oh, close it. Close it. There there we go. All right, we're live. We are actually live. Yeah. All right. All right. So, welcome, guys, to the Gamer and the YouTube Dad. YouTube family, what's up? The Gamer the and gamer the Dad, and dad podcast. Gamer. podcast. <laughs> Ten. You see we're how at, I can't talk? We're uh, we're messing up. Uh, we're messing up with each other here. But we're super excited. Thank you guys for for joining our regular viewers. Thank you so so much for hopping on at a different time today. And it's for a great, great reason, and we're super excited. Yes, Cameron. we are. We have the legendary Dave B. Mitchell here today. That's right. Our very first... Howdy! <laughs> our very first special guest that I never thought we would ever have. Like, not until well, later. Well, honored. <laughs> <laughs> we are super, super excited. Um, Dave, thank you so much for uh, for jumping on, man. And uh, I, we're oh, out of words pleasure. right now. Like... Yeah. Um, when... Uh, Cameron brought this to my attention. He was like, um, Dave contacted me. He's willing to come on the podcast. I was just beside myself. I was, uh, I don't know what to say. So thank you again and welcome to the Gamer and the Dad podcast. Actually, you, you froze. And so I don't oh, know what you go. said the last <laughs> sentence or two. I thought, I thought you left us. I was like, you didn't answer. Um, I remember when you, when we were setting up and you walked away, like he thought <laughs> He's like, I'm done. like, all right, Dave's had enough after the after two minutes, he's leaving. <laughs> I was just uh, closing the curtain in the booth, actually, so it just looked better in the background. So. Awesome. Uh, I well, see. welcome, man. Welcome, and thank you so, so much for being here. We're super excited. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah so to get things started off, uh, I want to say, uh, how has things been going since, you know, this whole thing's been kicking off in the world, you know? To point out the obvious, which I'm pretty sure we all know what's going on in society, we talk about it too many times. Yeah. Uh, how's that been for you, anyway? Like at least you know going around. Um, yeah, it's 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 like living in a movie. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, I I live by myself, so it's uh, you know it, it gets kind of lonely here. But fortunately, <laughs> I have stuff like this where I can you know stay in contact with people and things like that. Um, I, you know, I really I don't have much in the way of complaints because I know that I've got it way better than a lot of people do. Um, yeah. You know, um, and the fact that that our industry, you know, particularly for voice actors, has really very quickly pivoted to us being able to continue working at home, which is amazing. Uh, you know, so many of us already had, uh, in a lot of cases, broadcast quality studios at home. I mean, I, I have for years and I've done a lot of work out of here. Um, you know, the majority of my work still, particularly for games and animation, things like that, would involve going to the studio, and uh, I certainly miss that, getting to see my friends and my peers and, and just, you know, be out and about, but, right. uh, um, you know, so, so many incredibly creative and smart and dedicated people uh, on all sides of this thing have made it where we, we've been able to keep working, and we're really the only ones in the industry right now that have been able to keep working so we're really really lucky and, and you know aware of how lucky we are uh, every day you know the fact that I, I had done a lot of narration and promos and some commercials and stuff from home but um, you know we've been doing video games we're doing animation um, it, it's really been incredible how quickly the industry pivoted to to keep working and to keep all of us doing something and it's you know it's a real blessing um, just to get to to keep working still be able to stay home and be safe and, and try to, you know, do our part to help um, and and get to keep working in the meantime. I mean, it's honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty, it's surreal, but it's incredible at the same time. So was that, was that a pretty uh, seamless transition, Dave, from, from going to the studio to having to work at home now 24-7, basically? Um, for, for me and, uh, and some other people, probably more than others, yeah, just because of the fact that, you know, I've had a studio at home for years. Most voice actors have the ability to record from home, but you know, what would be perfectly good for an audition 
may not be sufficient for broadcast quality or to, or to actually go into a game or to be part of animation, things like that. Right. So for me, it wasn't a huge transition just because I already had the studio. Um, I have a background as a musician as well, so I have production experience. Um, so a lot of it was just kind of figuring out you know, best practices and, and how best to integrate together from being apart. Because, you know, at least with the studio, a lot of the times for years, you know, we've been able to work over the Internet or ISDN or, or with the technology. Right. Um, but you also had the thing of every cast member that's coming in is working in the same room with the same mic. So you have a certain amount of control over the sound. And okay. how things all go together when you put them together in a game or, or in an animated show. Um, and so I think that's been the big challenge. Um, certainly from the production side is figuring out how to integrate all of this together. And, you know, like I said, those of us that already had, you know, fully functioning studios that we've been working out of for years, uh, the transition was certainly easier for us. And, um, you know, all of the brilliant engineers and producers and directors and and everybody working on the other side of the glass um, have, God, they put in so much time and so much effort and, and really figured this thing out. And we're, you know, we're surging ahead at this point. We're, you know, we're working and we're, we're getting stuff done and it's sounding great. I, you know, I actually did my first ADR to picture session for an animated thing just recently where the studio in New York, there's a particular uh, piece of software called Connection Open that we were using for this. And they actually were sending me video over the internet, which I'm watching, and then I'm matching, I'm doing my ADR, automated dialogue replacement, so actually looping my dialogue to picture, matching lip flap and all the things we do in the studio, but I'm wow. doing it from here. And That's yeah, amazing. I mean, and it worked seamlessly. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's incredible. That's amazing, man. Yeah. That's incredible. That is amazing, yeah. It's especially because I've heard a lot of voice actors have been doing that where, you know, they just show projects that they've been doing from home anyway, or at least what work they can get, at least from this whole thing. So it's good that you guys are still able to get some work out there because a lot of major motion picture stars aren't able to do that right now with all the production being either pushed or just, you know, canceled. So oh, for that's, sure. And, I mean, it's, and it's so much harder on, you know, the, the working class actor, the, you know, the working actor that is has been booking jobs and they're you know yeah. they're appearing on tv shows and in movies but you know they, they need every job that they book so yeah. it's it's rough and we again we're the lucky ones in that just because of the nature of our business and and how this works in the technology the fact that we're able to to keep working when there's a lot of people who aren't working right now and and you know and my heart goes out to all of them because uh, yeah. you know, i got a lot of friends who are sitting at home just saying all right when am I going to be able to pay my bills again? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. There's been there was uh, there's been so many industries affected by this. Um, millions and millions okay. of people out of work, and it's incredible. Uh, I feel the same. My heart goes out to all those families that, you know, just lost. You know, mom and pop shops just lost a lot. Um, and us that can still work, yeah, it's it's we're really fortunate and we're really lucky. But, yeah, for um, sure. For sure. So, um, my first question. Um, it's his first question. My first question. <laughs> um, what you do, Dave? Is this is this always been a passion for you since since you could remember, or did you just happen to maybe because of music stumble onto this, or vice versa? Um, the answer to all of that is yes. Okay. Uh, it's it's all of those things actually. I um, you know I since I was a kid, I was an actor and musician growing up. Did both. Um, always had a good ear for uh for accents and dialects and characters and things like that so um like most of us that that do what i do you know we were the kids that we were getting in trouble in class for doing silly voices yeah. and, and you know and making jokes and doing all those things that and, was the best <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah yeah so i mean that that's the beauty of it is that you know really we're able to take that thing that's just innate to us, you know, who we really are, and actually, you know, make a living doing it and getting to do some of the most fun and creative and exciting work that you could imagine doing. And it, you know, every day you think, wait, this is really what I, I do for a living? Seriously? <laughs> every time, I mean, it's, it's even after many, many, many years of doing this, you know, at this point, I'm, uh, uh, I'm probably professionally, I'm probably about 23 years in now. Um, that's awesome. And still, there'll be times in the booth where I'll just kind of stop and look at what I'm doing, and I'm like, 
really? Okay. <laughs> this is my oh, living now. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, this, this is all right. <laughs> have you ever have you ever had a day? Did you have you ever had a day where you get up and go, oh, I got to do this again? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, of course, everybody does. Um, you know, some days you're just physically not feeling it, or or you got things going on, and you know, emotionally you're not into it. But um, and so I think that that's I think everybody does that. But that is so very much on the rare side. For me, most days you get up and it's like, all right, this is what I get to do today. And, yeah. and I'm lucky in that, you know, I get to do so many different kinds of things that from day to day, you know, half the time I don't even know what I'm going to be doing uh, tomorrow. Um, and it's always something exciting. And, and, you know, the the worst day of work I've ever had doing this is still better than the best day I work I had at pretty much any other job I'd ever done. So That's so awesome, man. Versatility. I mean, you're you're you're. Your list of, of, of projects is, is incredible. I was going over it. I, I couldn't even read all of them, man. You've done so much. And um, that kind of leads into my next, uh, my next question. Um, is it hard to go from voicing a video game to film or film to video game? I mean, is there a lot of preparing before something like that? Are they that different? Um, they're not. I mean, essentially, there, there are like specific skill sets for each type of thing you work on, for video right. games versus animation versus film, promo, commercial, trailer, all they're they're all, you know, there are specific skill sets that go into each one of those things, but but essentially they're all still drawing from the same well. Which okay. is, you know, there and there's a reason why in recent years I've I've really grown and this is just my personal thing, any anybody else, you know, however they choose to to identify or whatever they they choose to say is, you know, hey, that's that's on you. But uh, I, I've grown to dislike the term voiceover artist because mm. to me, and, and I do some work as a voiceover artist, and there and voiceover is a specific thing, but for the majority of what I do, for the majority of what, what a lot of us do, we're voice actors. And there's a reason I identify as a voice actor because acting is first and foremost. That's the most important thing. Right. And right. when people say, hey, I, know, I, wanna, I would love to do that because I can do voices and things like that. And it's like, okay, well, that, that's cool. But doing voices or having a good voice in the modern industry is, you know, maybe 10% of the job. Maybe. And that's being, I think, you know, pretty liberal with it. Um, because realistically, it comes down to acting, whether it's video games, which have gotten super sophisticated in their storytelling. They're very cinematic now. Right, uh, right. Animation, uh, you know, e even narration, promo commercials, stuff like that. There's what they're really looking for even though they are expressed in a different way, the audience and the people producing these things are just looking for one thing. They're looking for you to bring the truth. They're looking for you to be real, to be believable. Right. And so when people think, oh, I can do all these voices, oh, okay, but when you're doing those voices, is anyone going to believe any of those voices is coming from a real, living, breathing, thinking person or cat or, or toaster or whatever <laughs> right. it is you are? You know, are, do people do? Can you sustain it? And do is it believable when you watch it and listen to it? You think, yeah, okay, I buy that. That's a real being, right? And that's you know, and that's really that's the core of it. It's really, it's really all about acting. And again, voice acting versus on camera. Um, you know, people like to make the comparison and say one's harder. One, and I don't think it's a, a question of one being more difficult than the other they you know the goal is the same for both things and they both present their own set of challenges absolutely um it's just that you know you're, you're applying different skill sets to to achieve that reality you gotcha. know wh whether you're being seen whether you're just being heard but ultimately that's the goal is just is to tell the truth and so um you know they again it's just a question of, of skill sets and a lot of it is just from having done this for so long and done so many different things and a lot of what we do um, there's not a lot of preparation as far as the individual session goes because especially like with games most of the time on games we're working under a code name we may not even know what the game is when we show yeah. up most yeah. of the time the first and often last time we'll see a script from that game is when we walk into the booth because wow. of the secrecy and the way that, you know, that a, a ton of really creative, hardworking people put so much work into these things long before we ever show up and long after we're done. Right. And, and, you know, they have a very specific way 
that they want to reveal and share these things with the audience to create the experience that they've labored so hard to make. So, so you know, um, so we're oftentimes we're kind of in the dark, but the preparation for that has been doing it over and over and over and over again every day for years. And every time you go in, you know, learning what you can, doing the best you can, right, listening right. to, uh, you know, to great directors and writers and, and other voice actors and, and just, you know, hopefully bringing that skill set with you every time you walk in the booth, you've got something to draw from. And then you've also got, you know, those those same directors and producers and writers and all those people giving you everything they can give you to help you get where you need to be and ultimately to realize their vision and, and to bring something to life in the way that you're kind of uniquely going to do it. So Wow. Very interesting. Now, there's one question uh, from the chat from Myla. Uh, she asked... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she says, uh, "Who is who was or is your greatest inspiration for your career, or a person you admire the most?" Uh, that's a very good question, and uh, there there are two in particular. Um, there's a whole pantheon of people, both living and dead, that I have that I admire and have looked up to and have been inspired by. But my my two greatest heroes, my living hero, is Frank Welker, yeah. who I, I think. You probably ask any of us, arguably the greatest living voice actor on the planet and one of the sweetest, kindest, humblest, warmest human beings you will ever meet in your life. The first time I got to work with Frank was on Curious George <laughs> and he's playing George and he he couldn't have been more welcoming and kind and warm. And, you know, the guy's a living legend. Um, mm. And you'd never know what to talk to him because, and just watching the man work, he perfected doing this before I was born. Before I was even born, he was an expert at doing what we do. He was one of the gold standards. And you'd never know what to talk to the guy because you watch him work and I'm sitting there in the booth with this great cast and with Frank Welker, my living hero, playing a scene with him. And he brought so much joy to every single second of what he did in the booth. It was so inspiring. And it was like, man, even however many, I mean, he's been doing this for what, 50 plus years? I'm 50, so and he's been doing it since before I was born. So at least, he's probably what, 60 years into this, I would guess. Yeah. And he still brings the joy and the love and the fun and the warmth. And it's just inspiring to watch. Um, and probably the most cliche answer in the world because it's probably the answer you get from just about anybody my greatest hero of all time i still think the greatest voice actor who ever lived mel blank was the man um you know and the thing the interesting thing about mel uh and frank is very much you know of that same he cut from the same cloth the thing with mel that people always talk to oh he's the man of a thousand voices and da, 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 da. but he really is the perfect example of the thing i was just talking about it didn't matter how many voices Mel could do. Every single one of those voices was coming out of the mouth of a living, breathing, thinking individual that you believed. Every character that Mel did is because Mel was a great actor who happened to have the range to do a lot of vocal stuff. But all that did was allow him to bring his monstrous acting talent to bear on every single role he ever played. That's really good. And That's incredible. Especially, you know, Frank Welker, who's, I feel like he's been part of everybody's childhoods. Uh, of course, I, Yeah, of course. I remember him from the, the real Ghostbusters cartoons a long time ago. And I was re-watching those when I had the Ghostbusters 2 DVD or something like that. <laughs> and yeah. it was so good to hear, you know, him in that show. And also, more recently with Scooby-Doo, of course, uh, in the Scoob movie, which was just amazing that he was still able to pull that off. Because I was like, wow, it still reminds me of Scooby-Doo from like the back back in the day. And I'm surprised. Yeah. It's yeah, still... I've done a couple of Scooby-Doo things and and just, you know, and that's the thing. You're growing up as a kid, I remember back when I was probably four, you know, four years old, getting up Saturday morning back when that was a thing. And <laughs> one of my favorite things to watch on Saturday mornings, well, and it's really kind of funny, actually. Uh, this kind of ties back to that last thing. But probably my two favorite things to watch on Saturday mornings uh, aside from the Super Friends, because, you know, Super Friends, hello, but was, <laughs> was Scooby-Doo and, uh, and Looney Tunes. And so there you had, you had, you know, you had Frank and you had Mel uh, doing all these amazing things. And yeah, you, it's so funny to, to talk to Frank, because when you talk to him, you hear Freddie. Because yeah. Freddie's really close to his natural voice. So, so it's like you're talking to Frank and you're hearing Freddie talking to you. And it's just kind of <laughs> like, 
there's this little disconnect of like, wait a minute, what? What's happening right? Now? <laughs> so yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. That's that's amazing. That's that, awesome. I, I can't. <laughs> that that's a really good inspiration or admirer to you know just look up to and just see because you know Frank is I would say like probably one of the greats in terms of uh, voices in terms of what he can do. And oh not, sure. Yeah. Frank, not Frank is able to do things that I mean I I can do a lot of stuff. Frank can do things that uh, really as far as like if you've watched a movie or a TV show in the last. 30 years there's and you've heard an animal or a creature or some weird noise it's one of two people in most cases making those noise it's either d bradley baker who's also a genius or frank welker and i watch the i watch these guys work and sounds come out of their bodies that i i don't know how they produce i don't know where <laughs> it's coming from i don't know if they have an extra organ or or they made a deal with the devil or, or what it is but but somehow they are able to do things that just all of us it doesn't matter where we are as how much stuff we've done we all look at those guys and go guys i don't know how you do it you guys are geniuses you're brilliant I it's love the you. Gift. I know how you do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for it's sure. the gift. Yeah, absolutely, it's, man. It's the gift that they've worked really, really hard for a long time to hone. Yeah, so. absolutely. That absolutely. is really good. Do you have a question? <laughs> um, I'm just looking to look at the chat here. If there's anything else. Um, well, Myla does have one more question just before sure. we get to yeah, your question. Uh, she asks, uh, how much do you practice at a day or a week? Like, how, how often do you practice for an upcoming project or anything like that? Um, well, I mean, realistically, again, we it's very, very rare to get a script ahead of time. Yeah. So um, so most of it, there's not really practice in sort of the traditional sense, like a rehearsal like you would do if you were doing a play or if you were doing a longer form thing like TV or film. Um, but I, you know, I'm I'm doing work every day, whether I'm actually working on a job or whether I'm auditioning, I mean, I, I'm, I'm working and recording stuff every single day. Um, and even when I'm not working, so much of our job, it, it's really, and this is where the music background certainly comes in. You'll find most of us uh, have some kind of music background because mm -hmm. it definitely informs what we do as voice actors because so much of that, of that characterization and, and getting that, that reality of things is this. It's more, really almost it's more about having a good ear than it is about having a good voice. Because if you can't hear it, it's really hard to, to say it or to reproduce it or to, to express what it is you've got in your head or what's on the page in front of you. Um, so even if I'm sitting around with friends or I'm out in public, I'm constant, my ears are open, I'm listening. If I hear someone with an interesting voice or an interesting cadence or something different or, you know, or just different accents from different places, di different ways of speaking, those always, they go in and they get filed away. And they become part of the toolbox of like, oh, here's a character. I'm like, oh, you know, I remember I was talking to that guy the other day and he had such an interesting cadence. And man, I could really see that working for this dialogue. And so uh, a lot of the time, you, you know, you'll hear it a million times, but some of the best characters come out of bad impressions. And I, can, I don't consider myself to be particularly good with impressions. I, I do some and I booked some. Um, I think it's the thing I'm weakest at of all the things that I do. And I've got friends who are absolute, you know, aces, geniuses that when they do an impression, you can't tell it's not the person they're doing. But uh, I'm able to take the bad impressions and kind of weld a couple of them together uh, to, to find something new. And because there are pieces of the truth in those because they came from a real person. Right. There's there is a grounded quality to it that when you put it together, I think it just resonates with people that because you brought it from a real place, I think it's perceived as having some reality. So um, so the long winded answer, which I'm usually very good at giving. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> I talk for a living. Who knew? Uh, and I love, I've talked to no one for weeks. So this is <laughs> um, but uh, so, I mean, we're constantly. Um, I don't practice per se, and we don't really get rehearsal on things. But I am, not to sound you know cliche, but I am working on my craft every single day. Absolutely. Uh, whether it's auditioning, whether it's actually doing work, whether it's both, whether it's uh, just talking to other people, talking to my peers, talking about the industry, talking about how we work, talking about things we worked on. Um, right. All always just trying to add to the toolbox expand your mind and expand 
what it is you can bring to the table when when you when it is the day and it's time to actually do the work. That's amazing. That's that, so. Yeah, it's really fascinating to me because um, I, I thought it was the complete opposite. When you hear a voice actor, you think to yourself, wow, this guy, they, they shot him the script six months ago and they said, we kind of want it like this, we want it like that. So you're thinking to yourself, well, this guy sits at his house or in a studio and practices this voice for months at a time. But you're saying it's the complete opposite, which is amazing to me. So so how does this sort of work? Does you, just, you just get there, they give you maybe a piece of paper with some dialogue and they say this type of voice or i mean that's it's just a little fascinating to me how so how does that work if you could talk a little bit about that oh yeah sure uh and and really i will say when it comes to like the guys who are the aces with the impression stuff those guys absolutely put that six months of working on one voice in the, okay. you know, when the guys that i know that are really big with the impressions they will spend so much time just honing that impression and, and you know kind of kind of taking the rough edges off and right. find the specifics and uh, and so they will put all of that time okay. into honing an impression because it's a really specific thing it's it's sort of like learning to play a piece of music um, right. because there are you know there you got to play the notes the rhythms are there the articulations are there there's stylistic concerns uh, all of that sort of stuff uh, but then what we do most of the time a lot of my background uh, my formal education was actually as a saxophone player, but um, so mostly I came from classical and especially jazz. So a lot of what we I always liken what we do to being to I essentially say we're studio musicians. Absolutely. And you hire us because we did put the time in prior to to being hired, honing our chops. Right. And learning to play in different styles, learning all of our scales, learning all of our modes, learning all of those things. <laughs> so when you bring us into the studio. You put a chart in front of us, and you give us the information we need, and we're able to sight read it and say, okay, because I did all this work going into it, I understand how the music works. Now it's the specifics of this piece, but the music I've got. I've got my technique down. I've got my technique under my fingers. I've gotten my understanding of this. And so that's that's really a lot of what we do, particularly with games. Uh, we work cold. Okay. So going in, and, and a lot of the time, you know, because... Those of us that have, you know, there's definitely a core of us that work on this stuff all the time um, and have done a lot of these things. So it's with that, we put our time in. One, the, the writers and the directors and the producers, a lot of whom we are, not only are they peers, but they're friends, you know, because right. we with the most amazing people in the world. They're just such wonderful people in addition to being great professionals that it's it's such a joy every time you get to walk in the studio and, and work with these people and hang out with them and and we're friends outside of it so they know us they know what we bring to the table when casting something a lot of times they'll cast knowing okay if i bring dave in i know he can handle this stuff so i'm going to say okay we're going to throw this at you and say hey uh let's take a look at this character we have an idea for a voice print or they'll give you a picture is the best thing in the world because ah, okay. a picture gives you so much information. I, I would rather have one picture than a full page of description just because, particularly if you're looking at something like animation, the art style alone kind of suggests where to go with the performance. So if the dimensions, like say you're, you're playing a human character, yeah. if the dimensions are more realistic, grounded, uh, and proportionate, that means that most of the time the performance is going to be more realistic and grounded because artistically right. you're sort of fitting to what you're seeing now if if you're looking at something where the proportions are, are crazy and the art style is really nuts and over the top that's probably going to be more where that performance is going to head because it needs to fit what right, the visual right, right. is telling you um, so um, but a lot of it is we just we know each other and they kind of know when they bring us in Okay. where they want to put us. So, you know, generally, and again, you know, the writers, directors, they have a pretty good idea most of the time what it is they're looking for and why they bring you in. Every once in a while, and this is where we all get to have a lot of fun, uh, is when they'll bring you in and say, hey, listen, we got these characters. We have no idea what we want to do with them. We're open to anything. Uh, take a look and see if anything jumps out at you. Nice. And let's take a shot <laughs> at it. Um, definitely got to do that on um, on Wildstar. I don't know if you know that game was a big MMO. 
uh, and I played a ton of characters in that. And a lot of that, those guys were so much fun to work with because I would come in and they'd say, hey, here's the characters we have today. Uh, you're going to play three of them. Any of them jump out at you? Do you have any ideas? And sometimes they would have something specific they wanted me to do. Other times it was like collaboratively, I'd say, hey, this is kind of cool. What, you know, where were you thinking that this should go? What we, and then I'll throw something out there and they'll either go, oh, that's great. Let's do it. Or, huh, okay, maybe not that. Maybe what about this? Or you'll do something and go, oh, okay, yeah, do that, but maybe add this to it. And then nice. together you kind of flush it out and, and, you know, I say this every time anyone asks, but realistically, when the writer's done their job, and, you know, the writers do their jobs, for sure. Absolutely, uh, yeah. The performance is on the page. It really is. I mean, they, they make it so much easier on us because, realistic, when you look at the page, when you look at the script, you look at the character, it, the performance is right there. It's just waiting for you to pull it off the page and then put it out in the air. Right. So, um, so they, you know, I mean, they make us look good. And they, they certainly make it easier on us. And a lot of the time, if you know, if we have something to bring to the table, something they didn't think of, we'd say, hey, you know, I, I was thinking about trying this. And sometimes you'll do it, and they'll say, okay, that's cool, but this is where we were going. And again, as with being a ah, studio musician, gotcha. my job is to play your music. So if I have an idea, I'll share it with you. But ultimately, I'm there to make your music. So if you say, nope, this is what we're looking for, great, no problem, let's do it. But other times they'll go, I hadn't thought about that. That's fantastic. Let's do that. And you go, okay, then. Cool. Let's, nice. Let's, let's do <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and there's always right. that. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear. But there's always that thing about when uh, voice actors, especially in booths or whether you're working from home or whatever, it's always about giving to a certain scene that you want to do some uh, physicality. And does that come into your performances when you do uh, either you know video games, any of that sort of media? Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's actually it's far more physical than people think it is, and that's particularly with video games. It's one of the one of the tricky things. I think one of the things that people the first time they when they first come to games, that I think that they find the most difficult. I think it's agreed that the, the thing that new people find difficult is doing with what we call efforts, which are punches or taking a hit or throwing a grenade or swinging a sword or casting a spell or running or you know or being attacked by a monster and like and you have to do those sounds because the animators and the renderers and the artists are are making things that are insanely realistic and believable but if you don't contribute to that and you know add the the, the vocalization to it then then you're kind of not doing service to their work and it, and it needs that extra little spark to, to bring it to that because as human beings we relate to the idea of hearing a voice right so no matter how amazing and it is amazing the all of the work of the artists and the renderers and the programmers you know i look at the stuff that when i go into work on things and they show me something i'm like are, are you kidding me you made this from <laughs> nothing this didn't exist until you made this but it's real um but in for i think as a as an audience member as a viewer as a player um until you hear the voice it's still because intellectually you know that you're looking at something that quote unquote doesn't exist you know that it's artificial that it's creative as realistic and as amazing as it is i think that the thing that we connect with just as people is that you hear the voice you're like oh there's a person there okay that 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 amazing thing that i see that i believe that my eyes are telling me is real it is real because now i hear i hear them and i know that everything else that i'm seeing is all part of okay that's a real thing i buy it now. right uh so so yeah there's definitely physicality in the way that that I could built my booth here at home. I sort of did it in a diamond shape, so that I have some width and some depth when I need to be physical. Because you still have to be conscious of mic technique and and all of the technical yeah. aspects yeah, absolutely. of being yeah. a voice actor. Um, because you know there there's half of it is being an artist and half of it's being a technician. You have to combine the two, just like with music. Um, you know the expression and the truth is the most important thing. But the, the technique of it is how you effectively convey those things. So, um, or at least that, that's the stepping stone to conveying those things is having a, a technical ability as well. And yeah, physicality, 100%. If I'm in a game and I'm throwing punches, I'm on mic, but I'm throwing punches. I'm varying my punches up. They're coming from different places, different hands. If I know that I'm swinging a heavy weapon, like an ax or something, then yeah, there's going to be a physicality. A lot of the time, if I if I you know if I'm a cop and I've cornered a, a 
a suspect and I've got my gun drawn, I, I've got it out <laughs> yeah. you know, it's there and I'm talking and I'm, you know, so because you it speaks can the truth. hear these things. There's this, there's a technique for, that they've talked about forever in advertising called the smile and the voice in commercials. If you say something and then you say it again, but you say it while you're smiling, you can hear it. You can hear the smile. Believe it or not, you can hear the smile. That so is crazy. I think a lot of the time that's, I think sometimes, and I've <clears> talked to on camera friends that have transitioned to, to doing some voice acting and they said, they said, wow, man, it's it's more physical than I thought. I, I thought you had to be just, you know, rigidly locked on the mic and you have to be that. And it's like, you have to be conscious of those things, but you still have to bring the physicality because you'll hear it if it's not there. Right. Right. Yeah, because you so could just true. be you could just be standing and then giving like a you know expression or whatever, just doing like, oh, enemy at B or you know yeah, something yeah. like that, no, and like, that doesn't feel you know believable. And like you said, that's kind of where the physicality comes in because you could be throwing axes or grenades or whatever it could be, and that kind of gets. Those are the all belief. different types of physicality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, yeah. I definitely think that makes the scenes more believable. <clears throat> and I think you know sure. people like yourself and everybody, they really have to go through with that because that gives the director or whoever just the performance they want and fits to their scene of what they want want it to be so i think that's amazing and i think that's a good technique absolutely you have anything to add yeah there? um <laughs> dave give or take uh on uh, film or tv or or a video game i'm really curious how how long does it take from start to finish say it's probably hard to, to describe but uh to record uh, a, 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 a video game, for example, when you're one of the main characters in a video game, what is what is that like? How, what's the longevity on that? Um, well, you know, it, it really depends just because there are so many different types of storytelling being done in video games these days and because the big games have, have gotten so cinematic. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and it even depends. Like, for instance... Perfect example. I did. I've done the last several of the Arkham games. Yeah. And, and you know, I've been like Thug Three or you know, <laughs> GCPD Five. You know, just ancillary characters. Hell yeah. But because the world building is so immense, because they're putting so much into it for atmospherics and to create a believable world that you inhabit, and that no matter where you go in that world, there's something in it that's happening as if it's a real world. So even with those, I end up doing 10, 15 sessions on those games playing secondary characters because wow. we're filling in all of the little gaps. Yeah. Um, then it then it also depends <clears throat> on the nature of the game because for something like with um, uh, Outer Worlds, which um, one of my favorite things I've done recently, playing Vicar Max, who is one of the primary companions. So that was very dialogue heavy and I did a lot of sessions on that um, because again there are, the way that that storytelling is structured if for anybody that hasn't played it I don't want to give anything away but but you pick your companions and then your choices in the game define the narrative so if you decide this okay well the story's going to go over here then okay yeah. well you, that, you decide this it's going to branch off over here so you have all of these different permutations of story that you have to cover with the dialogue most of the time you're not going to hear the majority of the dialogue that was recorded because so much of it pertains to story branches you didn't follow <clears throat> but it also lends itself to replay value with a game like that because you can play it again make different choices and play a completely different game even with the same characters so um so it really depends you know a lot of the games where you go in and, and we're playing you know thug three soldier five things like that which which are great because we you know those are regular gigs and we love doing it we're working with the same people and we get to be part of these incredible cool projects and these huge games that that you know need every tier from the leads down to the ancillary characters to to fill out the world um so some of those are are one session <clears throat> one day uh and then you wow. go about your business other ones you're there working on it for months um it, it just really depends on the nature of the game the style of the game the size of the game just, there's so many variables so it's and that's one of the interesting and fun things about it is that it just it's almost never the same gig it's just you never know right you know, you're happy when you get one where you're like hey it's 10 sessions great you know um and because <laughs> part of the thing is with those is obviously hey 10 sessions nice um but also in some of those you get more chance uh particularly with lead stuff 
to to really dig into and develop a character over time, which is, as an actor, I mean, it's what we love doing. So right. Um, so it. Uh, so this, again, the long-winded answer to that question was: <laughs> it just really kind of depends. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. I I would have never. Yeah. I just. To me, again, you know, very naive at this at this uh, part of the industry, and I would think, you know, a video game could sometimes take, from what I've heard, you know, um, anywhere from four or five, six years sometimes to develop the whole thing, and you think, oh, wow, sure. you know, these these voice actors, you know, are probably in there day in day out for, for six years, which <laughs> probably isn't true, but again, a very naive thought of like, you know, they're probably you know in there for. For I mean, such a there, long time. There are, some, there are some that require more, particularly given, uh, you know, the, with the rise of mocap in games now. Yeah. Right. Where you know where they're actually having us go in and physically, you know, be in the volume and actually you know act out the things we're doing. Um, there can be a longer commitment. Obviously, you know, you're looking four, five, six years on a game. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people who are busting their butts for a lot of years doing a lot of work that without them you know we'd have nothing to do because they're incredible. they're they're the ones yeah the, and you know a lot of friends who are devs and people i work with all the time and things like that you know we've all just got nothing but the greatest of admiration and love That's for those awesome. guys those guys they're super creative and dedicated and passionate and they work their butts off absolutely uh, i know for something like uh you know my my involvement with Spider-Man PS4, which oh, is yes, <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> well, one of my one of my favorite things I ever did. Easily one of the best things I've ever been a part of. My involvement notwithstanding, just the game itself, it's a masterpiece. Every on every level, everything about that game's a home run. It's just ridiculous how good it is. Uh, and for somebody like Yuri, who was playing Spider-Man in that, yeah, who, you know, ended up doing a lot of mocap on it. I know that that like. He and a lot of the other sort of primary cast that did a lot that did all of their motion motion and facial capture, that those guys were probably working on that game for a, a year or two, probably. Wow. Going in, you know, not every day, obviously, but going in on a regular basis and and you know doing that stuff. Whereas me, I probably worked on it uh, over the course of a number of months. You know, various sessions going in, uh, you know, once a week, a couple times a month, whatever. Um, because you know, obviously, you know, Shocker's involvement in the game is much smaller than, say, Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I mean, it, you particularly if it's part of a franchise too, where you know, where there's a sequel or there are sequels, or a lot of times there's DLC. Um, you know, I probably worked on Mortal Kombat 11 for prob probably, I don't know, probably a year. As yeah. far as you know, going in, and again, it wasn't every day. It wasn't even every month. It just, but over the span of a year, going in and, and doing new things, particularly as they added new parts, or when you had DLC and they added new characters, you have to go back in and then you know put in the interactions with the new character, uh, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, definitely. I, I remember how we met on uh, Twitter, and I you know I saw the new Mortal Kombat animated movie, Scorpion's Revenge, and I thought it was just amazing to 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 watch <laughs> and to see. And especially just hearing all the characters and just making it feel like the Mortal Kombat, except not in a game and it's in an animated form. So you're not too grossed out by the violence. I mean, you could still be, but it's animated. So I was like, I'll let it. It's very violent. Yes, yeah, very I was like, I'll let it slide. It's in the name, Mortal Kombat. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how the live action movie goes. Uh, but, yeah. but th I thought that that movie is just amazing, and I was just like putting it out on Twitter, just you know, just praise, and I was just like, you know great movie 10 out of 10 and hopefully there's a sequel because the way it ended i was just like there's got to be something else to this and i just hope that there's like another chapter or whatever the case may be perfect movie for the pandemic by the way and he was just like might as well watch something while this is going on so yeah, yeah that was that was a dream come true for me because i'm a i'm a mortal Kombat fan since all the way back to the original game and and uh you know when i got to do mk11 and actually join the franchise and bring a new character Garrus. that's amazing for life and to get to play Sector, who is my favorite character in all of Mortal Kombat ever. And when they told me I was playing Sector, I think I, I, think I kind of lost my mind. But uh, And then, yeah, when, to, to get to do that film, which I love the way the movie came out. It's it's so good. And to get to be Raiden, I mean, you know, yeah. one of the core characters. I mean, uh, as a fan, you know, personally and professionally, that was, 
That's that amazing, was just man. a dream come true, and yeah. it came out so good. The movie looks and, and the storytelling and, and the casting, everything. It's just it's just so good. It's so good, and I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud to be part. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was like some big shoes to like. I, I would imagine it would probably be like some shoes to fill, especially with the role like Raiden, who's just you know. You know, you think of, like, uh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero as the two iconic Mortal Kombat characters. But to me, I, like, I, I, I think that, too. But I also think of Raiden because Raiden's kind of, like, the guy. You know, he, he's the one who leads this whole type of thing through the Mortal Kombat universe. Oh, well, he's, he's the, the defender of Earthrealm, of course. Yeah, so. exactly. So <laughs> yeah. I would imagine as you as the actor would stepping into that <clears throat> role would just be, like, I guess I'm the big guy now. <laughs> I'm the big guy. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and for a couple of reasons, yeah. Because, one, just as... As a fan, you know, I, fortunately, I brought a lot of knowledge of the lore to the job just because I'm a fan. So I know that world. I know those characters. And and uh, certainly, you know, considering that Raiden has been played by some pretty darn good people before me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Richard Epcar is kind of the iconic voice of Raiden, and he's a good friend. And he, I'm a I, not only is he my friend and a peer, but I'm a fan. I love his work as Raiden. Um, and you know, so that that's definitely. A little bit of like, okay, uh, here, here we go. But they just, you know, they just had a, they just had a different vision of Raiden for this, and, um, and that's, you know, I auditioned for it based on what they were asking for, and they liked what I did. Uh, you know, I, I think I, I got what they were trying to do, and went, went in there, and and our great director Wes Gleason, who I was a great friend and I've known for years and worked with a lot, really just you know helped. Uh, to to make sure that we were doing justice to the character and to the legacy and you know all the writers again I I, I can't stop you know praising those guys enough because they all just do such amazing work and without them w- you know we'd have nothing to say that's, so that's awesome um, yeah, yeah getting Absolutely. to be part of that and I just I'm so happy with the way it came out and I'm I'm I, a little con- I was a little concerned going in because it's really <laughs> hard taking on an iconic character that's been played so well by other great actors. Uh, that I was like, I you know, I hope people will give it a chance. I hope they like it. Um, I was proud of it. I felt good about it. I, 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 you know, I liked what they were doing. And so far, uh, it seems to have worked out. People, people seem to have liked my version of the character. They seem to like the movie. Um, uh, you know, I've been getting a lot of nice feedback from it, which I so appreciate because just again, as as a fan, I wanted to do justice to it, not just as a professional, but as a fan of the property and as a fan of the story. So that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> also, I just want to mention one thing. I did enjoy uh, your voice in Team Sonic Racing, the the game that came out last year as uh, Knuckles, and yeah. I thought that was hell hell yeah, hilarious. Knuckles. Hilarious, <laughs> and that was awesome. that was a pretty cool game to play, a nice racing game and all. And just hearing the Knuckles voice, I was like, yeah, Knuckles is pretty tough. <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of fun. Again, another tricky thing taken over for some pretty pretty great guys that had played the role before me. So that uh, and definitely uh definitely caught some heat for that uh, <laughs> people that didn't like the fact that it was different and it was changed um but you know the things like that it's like it's really <clears throat> it's that's out of our you know that's out of our hands that's above our pay grade um they had the audition for the role i auditioned they liked what i did essentially yeah, m- basically just trying to to do justice to what travis had done with the character before yeah, me yeah and really just trying to keep travis's character alive uh more than anything so uh you know all we can do is go in and do the best work we know how to do hope people like it and if they don't there's not a whole lot to do about it. <laughs> no i i like it bro <laughs> People like, oh, why did you do that? Why you? It's like because that's what the director told me to do, and the writers, <laughs> the creators, that's what they wanted. They signed off on it, so you'll have to talk to them. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, you're not, but ultimately, <clears throat> they signed the check, so I'm gonna do it. That's exactly <laughs> it. At the end of the day, that is it, and, man. And I hope I make you happy because that's, I mean, that's obviously a part of why we do what we do. We want people to love the work that no, we're doing. Absolutely, but, but. So. but you sh- you should very well know, Ditch, like everybody else in the industry. You can you can't make everybody happy all the time. No, everybody's yeah. gonna have their opinions. Sure, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but after going uh, over your extensive list of projects, man, I bumped into <laughs> one that caught my eye because it took me way back, and I just want to ask you about it. I was so anxious to ask you about it. I'm curious what this is now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Even, I, I'm so excited to say it because when I saw it on the list, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" 
dude, how was it to work um, the cartoon Tom and Jerry? To, again, talk about... Uh, That's historic, I, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, to talk about childhood dream stuff. Cause Absolutely. As a kid, it was always one of my favorite cartoons. <clears throat> of course. And, you know, when they, when they brought it back a few years ago, uh, getting to work on it was... I mean, again, it's one of those things. You know, I'm in the studio at Warner Brothers. and That's amazing. And I, I'm doing this stuff because, obviously, Tom and Jerry still don't talk, but all of the characters <laughs> around them do. Yeah. So I got some really cool characters. <clears throat> um, one of them, I, I unashamedly ripped off Robert Preston for the character. Um, but I'm standing there in the booth at Warner Brothers, and I'm like, I'm working on Tom and Jerry. Dude, that I'm is awesome. Tom and Jerry, are you <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it was it was so much fun because it's, again, you know, the one of the great things about this job is getting to find yourself working on things that you're a fan of. And I'm a fan of so many of the kind of things that I work on because I'm a big sci-fi guy. I, you know, I'm a huge geek. And so a lot of the games and stuff like that, I'm a fan of those worlds. I'm a fan of, of that type of storytelling. Um, and, you know, to get to work on things like <clears throat> Tom and Jerry and Scooby-Doo and these things that I watched as a kid. And, and honestly, as a kid, it never even occurred to me the idea that, oh, hey, maybe one of these days I can do that or I can be part of the show. It never even crossed my mind. It wasn't something I'd even thought of. So so to get to be a part of that, ridiculous. And, you know, the flip side, or the other side, it's not the flip side, the other side is is a lot of the people that, you know, that are still working in the industry that I grew up watching and listening to from a kid all the way up through adulthood to, to now. A lot of those people now not only are they my peers, people that I get to work with, but a, a lot of them are my friends, and you know they're just such wonderful, great people on top of being great talents. And that's that is maybe even the best part of the gig is that just realizing that these people that I had looked up to for so long and, and whose work inspired me and 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 you know helped me to want to do this. That those people are now people I can actually call my friends, and that's that's a gift. It's such a gift. I, I can't even put a value on that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, that that that's amazing. And my dad just <laughs> got all his excitement juice out of him. Was, uh, just when I saw that on the list, man, I was super excited. I was like, I can't wait to talk to Dave about that. It's just <laughs> it's a, such a historic cartoon, man. It goes well, way when back. I saw the booking sheet for that. I was super excited. So yeah, yeah. I, could, I could imagine. I could imagine, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, so so awesome. But there's also one thing because um, I've talked or I've heard from a lot of other voice actors like Roger Craig Smith and uh, Nolan North and some of those guys uh, yep. that I love, of course. And they've well, talked guy. about how there are certain projects or at least one or two certain projects where your voice is just your voice is just gone. You know, like oh, it just sure. breaks you. And I remember Roger Craig said he had to go an audition, but his voice was just not there. He's like, <laughs> like you know, he didn't have a, his energy back because he was doing so much work for a, a war game with Yuri Lowenthal. And has yeah. that ever happened to you where you just got burnt out super much about a project that you, could, you couldn't do anything for about <laughs> maybe like a couple weeks or, or more? Uh, it, not, not that far, okay. but oh yeah, for sure. Um, and you know, I'm going to preface that by saying that for the most part, the you know again I, I keep going back to this, but these wonderful people that we work with, these especially like the voice directors, so, you know we so many of us we've worked together for years on so many different projects, and we're friends outside of work, and you know they're just the super super professional, um, and they conspicuously and frequently go out of their way to protect us, to protect the actors because mm -hmm. they know that particularly with something like games. You know, just calling it what it is, games don't pay the same thing as commercials or promo or things like that where you make a lot more money. Right, right. So, one, they don't want to kill you so you can't do the other work. Um, you know, and by the same token, the job you're booked on, you have to give it 100%. When you're there, this is the job. Do the job as required. But you can't, you can't right. do, do it halfway because you got another gig. But that being said, again, they, they go out of the way to protect us. I did a game... Um, it was, I can't, it, it was either Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions or Edge of Time. It was one of those two. I was in both. One of them I played Dr. Octopus in. Okay. <laughs> um, nice. And so when I showed up to the session, it was a Friday. 
And I thought it was a callback. I didn't know it was an actual uh, session. So the director, a uh, guy, Jamie, that I've worked with a bunch of, you know, in the past, and his style was always kind of, he, he likes to kind of bust your balls when you're working. Um, <laughs> it was a family show, but... Um, <laughs> it's all good, it's all good, yeah. He, uh, hey, we got rejected one time. <laughs> but it was always just in creating an atmosphere. It's, it was never serious. It was just kind of that friendly back and forth thing. Well, I got there. Friday tells me, no, it's it's an actual job. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. Okay, cool. So then he starts going through the script. <clears throat> so I'm playing uh, I'm playing Otto Octavius, pre-Doc Ock Otto. Yeah. And, and also, like, Militia 3 and, you know, Thug 5 or whatever. And he's looking through the script. He suddenly stops gets a very serious look on his face and looks at me and he says I'm so sorry I had no idea um, thank god it's Friday <laughs> afternoon I'm assuming you're you're clear for the weekend I'm like yeah this is my last job of the week he said we're going to get one take of everything I will only ask you for a second take if I absolutely have to have it but we're going to just he said if I'd seen this script so even he hadn't seen the whole thing so if I'd seen this script beforehand, this would not be one session. I had, no joke, between the three characters, most of the dialogue was on. I had six pages of dialogue. Wow. And 22 pages of screaming. Oh. Transforming <laughs> into a creature, throat ripping, lung oh. busting, for 22 pages. You're kidding me. <laughs> and Jamie was horrified. <laughs> he was absolutely horrified I think we might have done two takes on two or three only because he needed them everything else he was like nope one's good we're moving on and we got it done we did get it done by the end of the session I could not actually make a sound with my mouth oh, um, wow. so yeah so I went on vocal rest for the weekend literally did not say a word for two solid days uh, went in on that Monday to work on one of the Dynasty Warriors games. I don't remember which one, but I was... Um, I played Guan Yu for quite a few years and a bunch of those, and I played the younger Liu Bei in, in, in sort of alternating ones. This was definitely one of the Guan Yu ones. <clears throat> you know, Guan Yu is a big, deep, resonant voice, and and uh, I, I kind of sound a little beat up right now just because I've been working a bunch today. Um, mm. So I was kind of like that. So I got there, and, you know... I was doing okay. I hadn't. I had been responsible. Drank a lot of water. Didn't speak. Did yeah. all my stuff like that. And uh, you know, was was getting through it. About halfway through the session, I was I was starting to feel it. They couldn't hear it. They said, "No, you sound great, but just you know, just let us know." Uh, and I was able to to get through that. But oh yeah, um, that's definitely the one that stands out. I, I've had sessions um, that you know typically they'll let you know they're going to be what we call vocally stressful. And they'll they'll book a shorter session for the vocally stressful stuff. If you have a range of stuff, um, different levels from sort of whispered all the way up to combat projected, then usually they'll kind of mix it up. You'll change levels throughout the session. At the very end of the session, you'll do some of the loudest stuff, the most projected stuff, to sort of you know let you get through the other stuff and get out, and then come back and do more of it in the next session. Um, I remember walked in for one for the Mad Max game, and uh, and it was booked for a half an hour, wow. which, which was frightening, because typically there'd only be one reason they'd book <laughs> you for a half an hour. I walked in, my friend Chris was directing, and she looked at me and she said, okay, uh, today's what we call a being on fire session. Uh -oh. Literally, <laughs> all you're doing today is you're going to be on fire. And that's why it's booked so short. We're going to get you in and out of here as quickly as possible. Oh. You know, we're not going to over. But so I, I had to be on fire. And uh, yeah, by the end of that, I was like, okay, I'm going to go be silent now. <laughs> and work. Good that's Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good Lord. I don't, I don't know how that would feel. That's the gig, though. You know, I mean, it's what you do. Yeah, it is what you do. And um, this other question, uh, you may have talked about this earlier, but. You know the working from home type aspect especially what we're going through right now uh you don't you don't go to well you have your own booth but you don't go to like a studio booth where the cat or the directors and stuff would be there and telling you you know what you need to change or what you need not to change uh 
do they still contact you like like how they do like like how we're doing right now are they still doing oh, that sure. yeah, yeah. Like, i mean we we do most of the stuff i've done so far uh, i've got what uh, there's a program called source connect which is sort of there was a technology called isdn if you know anything about computers you, you've probably heard of it it's actually very very old technology now um but that was sort of the studio standard for many many years because it was a dedicated high speed 14.4 so high speed is kind of a funny thing to call it but it was a dedicated digital line that if you had isdn access anywhere in the world you could connect to isdn from one studio to another and record so i've done plenty of things from you know i'm in la and i'll go to a studio here with isdn and i'll record to chicago or to new york or something like that to their studio there i'm speaking to the mic here they're recording it into their system on the other end that's crazy and so now because the technology has changed i stand the phone companies don't really want to support it anymore because it's old technology so uh and because you have broadband everywhere and you have such high bandwidth um mm -hmm. there's a few different solutions source connect is kind of the standard one that everyone's kind of gone to it's another one called ipdtl um the other one i mentioned was uh connection open which is kind of a newer one which um i've used as of yet, since I've been home, because I didn't have Source Connect only because I didn't have a, like a regular promo gig where I know I needed to record from home every day. So I was like, I'll get it when I need it. Well, as soon as this happened, everybody's like, all right, Source Connect, we're all in. So we all got it um, and got it all set up. Haven't actually used it yet. Um, all the sessions I've done so far have been, a lot of them have been over Zoom, where I, in the booth I have an all-in-one PC, which I use for scripts, but it's got a built-in webcam. So uh, we'll you know, connect to a Zoom meeting. They can see me, I can see them. They're hearing what I'm recording on the other end. I record it locally and then throw it up on the internet and then they download it and boom, we're good to go. Uh, the other way is we can do it through Skype like this. Um, Skype also offers a virtual phone number, which you can call into from any phone. Landline, cell phone, doesn't matter. I've had that for years. We use that a lot, actually, for narration and, and promo stuff, where you call in from your phone to my Skype phone number, not using Skype on your end, and then the feed into Skype on my end is actually coming from the mic in my booth. So what you're hearing over the phone is exactly what's coming out of my booth, uh, and okay. holding a phone up and listening to that. Um, so that's another way that, uh, that I've done things. So yeah, I mean, the technology... Um, pretty much <coughs> well every and then doing the connection open thing like I said I was able to do some animation where I was actually doing animation to picture from home they could see wow. me I could see the picture so I can see the lip flap and match you know and, and match all the lip sync uh, to picture and and they're recording on their end typically uh, most of us I think even if you're working over Source Connect or, or Connection Open or something like that, I'll run my DAW in the background and record anyway, just in case. Yeah. Um, so if there's any dropouts or any issues on the other end, I've still got the same recordings at you know studio quality on my end that if we needed to, I could then just upload those files. But yeah, I mean, they're all still as interactive. Um, you know, we're still, we still see each other. We're still getting direction, feedback. Some of the meetings or some of the sessions, you know, you'll have your voice director, you'll have the writers, you'll have guys from the game company, you'll have, you know, any number of people, all the people that you would have. And a lot of the time, you know, in the sessions at studios, you'll have your voice director there, and sometimes a writer or one of the guys from the one of the game devs. But a lot of the time, even before that, we had, you know, if you're working with a company in Montreal or, or something like that, wow. they'll call in on Skype. And so they can hear what's going on and offer their feedback. And then you've actually got your director sitting there in front of you. So it, it's essentially doing the same thing, just virtually. So yeah, it's it's still interactive and it still involves as many people as it needs to involve. Yeah, because you all you, you always want to make it perfect, regardless of like how how the connections go and stuff like that. So no matter what, it's gonna work either way. And I think that it's good that voice actors like yourself and many others are still being able to do what they can, just at the comfort of their own home or however they you know see fit. So sure. I'd say that that's really amazing. That's it's good that there's still some work out there in the world. <laughs> it's, am, it's amazing to me. This whole thing, I have a whole new respect there for uh, voice actors. And I'll be honest with you, man. I, you know, I had never, I had never gone in depth uh, with that industry, that part of the industry, uh, the voice acting. But it's, uh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. 
um, the work you guys do, um, the physicality, like like Cameron said, you know, it's um, it's incredible, man. I have a whole new respect for it, and uh, it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I see it a whole different way now, man. A whole different right, way. That's very cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> but with that said, though, unless I'm missing something, Dave, why why is it that voice actors don't get the same recognition as a your everyday actor unless i'm unless i have that wrong or i'm not i'm not seeing something but they're no you're, you're right and um it's i mean part of it is just due to the nature of of the work we do um because you're not on the camera you're like animation or well, video games yeah i mean you know if you're watching a movie or a, you know live action movie or a tv show or something like that you you are in a lot of ways you're connecting with the person you see in front of you because you are you, you know even if uh even if it's you know someone wearing a, a prosthetics or a lot of makeup or right. or done it right, in a way right, that right. doesn't look like you normally look you're still connecting with them and you know the the character that's being portrayed is still the person you see standing there in front of you on camera um whereas with us you you know you do connect with the voice for sure absolutely obviously. absolutely but but the thing that you're processing as you're watching it, you're not seeing. You're not seeing me. You're seeing at least if I've done my job, you're not seeing me. You're seeing the character. Yeah. Uh, and certainly in recent years, just because people have become more aware of the nature of what we do, um, we, there's definitely a lot more recognition for us now than there was before, for right. sure. Right. Um, you know, the fact that I'm doing this, the fact that that you know I, I go on social media and there are people that know who i am and that you know that it's still i've said this every time i talk to anybody it still boggles my mind even after all these years that anybody that i'm not related to or don't know personally <laughs> gives a crap that i want to do this is astounding to me you know um, so it's it's you know it's it's really cool um but i i think that's it just because a lot of the time it's it's sort of like all those other great creative people you know sound designers or or film composers or editors or or you know dps or just all the people that that right. do all of the other things that are required a lot of the time when they're doing their jobs well you don't notice them right. and that's kind of the nature of the job is you know if an editor has, has done his job right you're not aware of the editing because you're so involved in the story and the way the story is being told, you're not thinking, "Oh, that was a good edit there." Unless, I mean, unless you are actually on that side of the thing. If you know, coming as someone in the industry, it's really hard not to see the technique and and to appreciate it. Right. But even then, you know, you, I love it when I get lost in something and I'm not even aware of the things that I know how to do or that I know how they're done, because the artistry has taken me over. Right. Right. Um, so I think that's a I think people are much more aware of us now, for sure. And there are so many outlets for us to have that connection with fans. Um, social media, obviously, being a big one. Um, the fact that, you know, like Twitter and Instagram, the fact that you actually see our faces in yeah. a lot of cases. Whereas, you know, most people, I mean, who until really recent years, everybody knew his work, but who could have picked Frank Welker out of a lineup? Yeah. yeah. That's... People could have said, oh, that's Frank Welker. Um but I'll tell you, one of the cool things about that, there was a great story that another friend of mine told me, who's another great voice actor. He was at a store in Burbank with his son. His son who was, this was, got 10, 15 years ago. His son was much younger now than he is now. He's in college now. But uh, he was at, uh, I think it was Royal Books, which is one of those remaindered bookstores, you know? Yeah. Which I love books, so I, I hang out in those places. But he was in there with his son, and he was reading him some story and do the characters for him and tom kenny happened to be there oh tom wow. kenny yeah tom, tom is one of the another one of the sweetest human beings you will ever meet yeah. in your entire life he's crazy talented and he's one of the nicest guys walking the planet for sure um but so he ran it so you know he and tom were friends and and he's like oh hey tom what are you doing here on a break from one of your 23 cartoon network shows and he was like <laughs> yeah because cartoon network is literally right across the street so so they're walking up to the front of the store and this woman walks up with an armload of books, and my friend, my other actor friend said, that was the day that I realized that we have the best gig in the entire world. Because this woman walks up to Tom, voice of SpongeBob, 
the most popular cartoon character <laughs> on the planet and says, excuse me, sir, can you tell me how much these are? <laughs> Tom, Tom kind of, you know, he kind of looks like Buddy Holly. He's got kind of a, his nerdy glasses, and he's a very unassuming guy. Um, and he, so here is the the voice of the most popular character <laughs> in the world being mistaken for a clerk in a in a, a, a bookstore. <laughs> yeah, we that. get all of the perks. You know, we get the work, and we, we're, you know, if you achieve a certain level of success, you certainly get the financial benefits. Um, but we get to do this amazing work. And yet, unless we want people to know who we are, and it's you know we love doing conventions, and because it's, yeah, and it's not really so much about hey look at me I'm awesome. It's like hey all of you people that make it possible for us to do this, and, and you know that are fans and, and support our work. This is our chance to get to meet you face to face and talk, and and you know and and we love it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean it it really kind of we kind of get all the good stuff without all the crap like not being able to go out in public or <laughs> that's what i was gonna say like because you know most like, that level, like kind of people but, yeah like most hollywood actors like big major hollywood actors you know they probably wouldn't even step outside because they know what's gonna happen like as soon as you see somebody on the street they're gonna be like oh hey you know like you know pop paparazzi pretty much and you know do yeah. all that but for you guys you don't really have to deal with that you can literally walk into like a a, a store and get some food or something and and then you just walk away and like, oh, nobody talked to me. <laughs> it's just like, it's just like that. That must be nice, just to like, you know, at least go out in public. Whereas other, you know, big celebrities, they can't really do that without having somebody on their tail whispering for a picture or you know, big autograph that they're gonna sell anyway or whatever the case may be. I don't oh, know. Sure. Well, I don't and know. that's the nice thing with us, you know, doing cons and and you know appearances and things like that. That, you know, we know going into that that okay, yeah, this is our chance to sort of be out in public and with and we already know that we're dealing with people that know who we are mm -hmm. um and it's not even so much that they know who we are but they know our work which is really kind of even better because you know at that point they're they're a fan of your work and then when you know when you get to interact with people and and you know i i think it's a big responsibility personally um you know, you got to be nice to fans, and sometimes yeah, fans can be nuts. I mean, there's there's no doubt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's you know, it's just like with anything else. There's some people that are nuts, and and most people are not. But even with kind of the nuttier ones, the ones that are harmless, you want to be kind, right. because you know the, it's so funny. I remember one of the first times that I did Comic Con, and I had somebody say to me, "You're the nicest celebrity I've ever met." I'm like, "There's a celebrity here? Where, <laughs> <laughs> Where is he?" <laughs> but that's the thing is that you know. We have a, you know, the realistic view, and again, it's not, it's not being down on myself, but I know where I'm at. You know, I, I know where I kind of sit in the mix of things. Um, but to somebody who's not involved in the industry, when you're a voice in their, in their favorite video game, when you're in their favorite cartoon, when they hear your voice on TV, when they hear your voice in a movie, to them, in their world, you are a celebrity. Right. So yeah. they, they take this elevated view of you. Which is, which is inaccurate. You're not, you know, no one is up here over anyone else. It's not how it works. But people can tend to take, take that view. And I came up with a, a way to describe it. One of the interview I did a couple years ago, and I kind of stuck with it because I really liked it, which is when people take that view, it's, it's not that I'm, or any of us, are better than you. We're just better at I'm better at a thing of course. than you. Of course. You're better at things than I am. Right. But I'm not, none of us are better as people than you because of what we do or because we're lucky enough to get to do this for a living. So I'm not better than you. I'm just better at this thing. Right. So, so the idea is if you treat somebody like that that has an elevated view of you, you treat them with just basic kindness. Just treat them nicely. Treat them like a human being. Treat them like they matter. Absolutely. You know? Um, what it does is it doesn't bring you down to where they see themselves. It brings them up to where they see you. Of course. And that's, that's awesome. That's the best thing in the world. How could you not want to do that? Because this is a person who, like, supports your work and, you know, almost looks up to you as somebody who wants to get familiar with that industry. Yeah. So that's so awesome. The idea of being able to just, just through basic kindness, it requires nothing of you to be a decent human being. Absolutely. It really does. I agree. That's you know? awesome, man. That's, that's very true, and I agree. That's awesome. I think it's important, important, you know. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, it's very important. I'll tell you, there's a just a little story 
uh, a few years ago at Comic-Con. There's probably my favorite character I've ever played. <clears throat> There's a, a webcomic called Looking for Group. I don't know if you're familiar with it. If not, you should check it out. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's called Looking for Group. It's been around for quite a few years. It started off as a parody of World of Warcraft. And then it sort of evolved into sort of a uh, catch-all pop culture, all fantasy, sci-fi, but it's very much based around Warcraft. And I play one of the main characters named Richard, who is an undead warlock who uh, often goes around killing entire villages full of people, men, women, children, pets, uh, while singing parodies of Disney songs. Uh, <laughs> What? My favorite, I swear, I swear, I still think Richard's my favorite character that, that I play. Because I get to sing and I get to be evil and, it, and it's so much fun. Uh, but so, one of the fun things was that the guys that, that do this comic, and they do a bunch of other web comics, and they're super creative guys. We became friends years ago when I started working for them. They're up in Canada, so I see them once a year when they come down to Comic-Con. But so, uh, so Ryan Somer, who's the writer, and Laura D'Souza, who's the artist, they're both phenomenally talented guys and just really, and they're great friends. So I'll, I'll usually go down to Comic Con and I'll hang out at their booth, and you know sign stuff and mostly just kind of hang out with them and kind of have a good time and, and enjoy being in you know geek heaven, um, but not having to be swimming out in the rapids like, like a pool and kind of hide in and like look at things. Uh, but so you know most of the time, most of the people that are fans of LG, they know Richard for sure, and they've seen the videos on YouTube of the songs and all that sort of stuff. But the majority of them didn't know me. You know, they wouldn't recognize me. Now they would recognize uh, Ryan and Laura because their pictures have appeared on the strips, and and they have appeared in their own strips as themselves as well. So people know what they look like when they come walking into the booth. I'm sitting there, and they don't know who I am. Um, so, which is a lot of fun when when people find out. My favorite one, and this is just sort of to illustrate that story. The idea of treating people with kindness. So I had shown up there on a Saturday. They'd been there since Wednesday night, preview night, doing the whole thing. And so this adorable girl, she was probably maybe 12 years old, kind of dressed like an elf, comes to the booth and she comes in kind of quietly. And she's looking at the books because they've got all of the, the web comics hardbound for sale. And they've got plushes and, and figurines and all kinds of stuff with all of their comics. And so she's kind of picking her book out and so Ryan says yeah she she came first the first night she came was Thursday and she kind of came by herself kind of looked from the outside just kind of looked at stuff and then left so she came back on Friday and this time she came in and kind of looked at a few things so this Saturday she came back with her parents and she was actually getting stuff and so she brings her books over and she sets them down and Ryan's talking to her and Laura's talking to her and they both sign the books and she takes them, and Ryan says, "Would you, uh, would you like Dave to sign it?" And she was so cute. She clearly, she had no idea who I was. <laughs> clearly, was so polite, and so sweet. She didn't want to hurt my feelings. She just kind of looked like she didn't know what to say. And so Ryan said, "Have you seen Slaughter Your World?" And she, and he's like, <laughs> "Oh my goodness!" Rich, and her eyes get huge. She hands the book over to me. <laughs> I sign it. And it's gonna make me cry because it made me cry then. Uh -huh. I book deck to her, and all three of us grown men sitting there on the verge of tears. <laughs> takes the books and does this. Uh. And all three of us are just sitting there, tears, because uh. we look at each other like, okay, that might be the single greatest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. That is all we had to do awesome. was write our stupid names in this girl's book. <laughs> so much to her it made her so happy so genuinely happy that we were like you know what that's it right there that's the whole reason that's everything yeah especially the, those little things especially that that make it yep. you know the job worthwhile and you know when you do and then all of a sudden these little kids and they're just so, <laughs> so nervous awesome. meeting somebody it's just like oh i didn't know that person was like you know that that she seemed like just the sweetest most kind-hearted girl. I mean, she was just adorable. She seemed so, so sweet and shy, and it just, it was beautiful. And literally, we all three of us are sitting there, just tears running down our faces because we were so touched by it. Got to hold the tears. That is awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, so touched. Yeah, and that's that's an awesome story. I think that's part of what of what you were talking about, Dave, of, of the sense of responsibility for what you do. Also, when you oh, have sure. when you have these fans that come over and. Like that little girl that found out who you were, what 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 voices you would do, and she was just in awe, 
And that's kind of what, what I was talking about too of, of the recognition because someone like her, she sees a character on the big screen or, or a video game or whatsoever connects so much with that with that character and then finally gets to see the voice behind that to her it's 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 amazing you know well, yeah absolutely 100 percent. and that's the other thing too is that no matter who you are you could be the biggest a-list celebrity in the entire world but that person is a fan of somebody Yes. There's something that that person looks at their work and looks at them and goes, "Oh my God, yeah, it's you." Yeah, exactly. You know, and that that's kind of what's cool about it is that you know we're all we're all fans. Yeah. And no matter what kind of work we do, even though it's it's still just the idea of having fans is kind of one of those like, "Wow, I have fans. That's weird." <laughs> uh, but I'm a fan. I'm a fan of things. I'm I'm a diehard Star Trek fan. I have been since I was three years old. Uh, you know. I love Star Wars. I, I love all of these things. I'm a fan of these things, and I'm just as passionate in my fandom as as fans who follow my work, as fans who follow other things. I'm I'm a fan too, of course. And I'm just as geeky and just as passionate and just as into it as anybody else is. Yeah, I have to inform my dad about a lot of stuff, so because I am a geek too, and he he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I'm, I, I'm still I'm still learning, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm really excited that uh, that you know my son and I. We started this podcast because um, it's like we said in the first couple of podcasts. It just shows we just want to show also that that this takes nothing, you know, and uh, the connection and 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 doing it together. And um, which I told you that's just before we actually went on here. Like I love that you guys do this together. I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's, love, it. love it's, it. Thank you. Yeah, and it's like I told him too. You know, the beginning. I said, always be yourself, always be humble, mm. be kind, and you know, everybody else will follow, man. And it's just, and this is us, you know, this is what we do, this is how we are. Even when we're grabbing a burger or something, this is the <laughs> way we talk, you know, and this is the way we uh, we conduct ourselves. And um, so it's it's great. And I, I love you guys together. I love your connections. Thank so you very much, it's, man. It's, it's, it's it's lovely to to talk to you and be a part of this because it's I think it's great. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, Thank you very much. From a guy who's never seen Star Wars before. <laughs> yeah, he always he always uh, he, <laughs> he always gets on me that I've never seen a Star Wars movie. If you could believe that, Dave, ever in my life. See, here's the cool thing for you now, though, <laughs> that you now for the first time get to watch episodes four, five, and six. <laughs> and stop. That's and right. Just leave it at those three. That's right, man. And you can watch Rogue One too, because Rogue One was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> especially because we did a stream. We did a stream on May the, May the Fourth be with you, and we did our weekly podcast. And he had no effing clue what it was. I was, was clueless like, the first three times he uh, he said that to me. I was like, "What? Okay, I heard you the first time. What are you talking about?" And uh, you know but, what? You know what the cool thing is, and one of the things I'm I'm kind of a knowledge junkie. I just love knowing things. I love learning. I just I I just I I love it. And one of the cool things for me. Uh, particularly with this kind of a fandom, is it, it's sort of like being in a, a house with you know hundreds of rooms that you know nothing about. Right. Yeah. Every time you open a door, there's something in that room. There's a whole world in that room you didn't even know existed. Right. That now you get to be a part of or learn about. That's awesome. Or you know, and suddenly your world just got bigger because it's like, wait a minute, my my boundaries were here because that's what I knew. But then I opened that door and, wow, now my boundaries are over here because I didn't even know that was a thing. And there's a whole world of, of things to know and people that are experts about something I didn't even know existed. Exactly. That's cool. I love that. Yes, abs that's so true, man. So true. And um, that's that's so awesome. That is so awesome. Um, well, Dave, I, I uh, listen, man. I know we, we, we've taken uh, so much of your time already. Um, oh, it's been a pleasure. <clears throat> Seriously. All I can say is it's just it's been amazing. Thank you, man. It's been an honor to have you on here. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time. And um, and uh, it was awesome. And I learned so much. And again, I have a whole new respect for voice actors. And um, and I'm so glad you were the first one that we've talked to. And um, thank you for your kindness and, and, your, and being so humble with it, man. Yeah, I hope it goes uh, around. <laughs> I, I, I love what you guys do, so I, I'm honored to I'm honored to be your first uh, first guest here. Because again, I, I the fact that you guys are doing this together, I absolutely love it. I think it's I think it's great. Thank you. I think you, it's man. great. 
you know, it, it, it makes me smile. So awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was his idea after all, and I just agreed with it, and <clears throat> it went from there. And we always talked about, you know, maybe we'll have a Keep guest doing on. It, guys. Keep it up. Yeah, Keep doing thank it. you so much. And For sure. it was just like we always talked about, like or at least at the end of the first very first podcast we did we always talked about like uh oh maybe we'll have a guest like who who knows like just sitting in the in the, well yeah. we couldn't do that because obviously everybody's at home but you know it's just sitting right here in the middle <laughs> uh, yeah, here we are yeah and here right. and here we are yeah, it's just like, like dave said you open the you open the door man it's a whole world out there you never know you know what's what's out there but um here we yeah are, you know here i was really now. i was really hesitated to ask that question when when uh you and me were like talking on twitter and i was just like oh, maybe maybe but we'll see because i don't want to push anything you know i tried especially it's with her task you know i mean the, the worst you can get is no yeah <laughs> and honestly <laughs> but if you asked if somebody gave you crap about it that's on them that's not on you yeah but it never hurts to ask and you know right. if they say no it's whatever i'm not gonna get you know hurt over it because you know you guys got all the work and stuff so sometimes yeah. you know schedules happen and you know how we had to schedule different yeah. things between our podcasts oh, yeah. and stuff. Thanks for changing your schedule to have me, so I appreciate it. Yeah, that. Abso- absolutely, absolutely. Anything, absolutely. Anything to get a guest on here, especially <laughs> our first guest. Because we normally have, like, plushies in the middle of our <laughs> damn sign. And that, I think we had, like, what, maybe, like, four yeah. already, maybe five. Yeah. And yeah. I think having a real-life person <laughs> in. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. We, uh, it's an honor, man. Thank you so much again, Dave. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're so welcome, guys. Seriously, the honor's mine. I appreciate it. Thank there you. was one person, and he kept asking this question over and over again in chat. Same copy and paste and everything. <laughs> um, you probably have it, but he, he, I'm just going to ask it anyway. From Jacob, he <laughs> says, have you done anything for Epic Games? <laughs> Epic Games? Uh, probably. Um, the funny thing is, a lot of the time, we don't necessarily know who we're working with. Like, we kind of have an individual contact, but... Um, trying to think epic i i got i must have i don't see how i have it yeah uh i'd have to look but uh yeah i mean if you name something specific i can tell you but um i'm uh, god i'm all but i'm all but sure that i have uh well i think i know this jacob he, he's obsessed with fortnite at the moment so that's probably why he's asking epic games that i have not been in. yeah I, okay I, let's get that out yeah. of the way because <laughs> I, I know jacob I I and... I, yeah fortnite is one that i wish that i actually had been part of. well there's not really well as far as i know there's not really too many voices going on for that because none of the characters and stuff have voices it's just like a i think in the uh save the world mode there's voices but that's not really uh, known or I've had auditions for it, so I, I know that there definitely are some kind of characters there. Yes, so Jacob, I hope that question was answered because <laughs> when he says Epic Games, the only thing people go in their mind for Epic Games is just the Fortnite, which is pretty much the obvious elephant in the room. Yeah. Uh, but I don't that's think... probably why I didn't think of it because I'm I haven't worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, like you said, you don't know which company it's gonna go for, so you could just be working on something and all of a sudden, like, oh, it's for that company or it's for Warner Brothers or. You know, what, yeah. whatever. Yeah, if I'm at Warner Brothers, then I have a pretty good idea. Oh, it's a Warner game. Okay, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> could be a DC project. It could be a Mortal Kombat project. Who knows, man? Yeah, for sure. But that's their... Uh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> it's all right. Take your time. <laughs> uh, has there been projects like between uh, Marvel and uh, DC that you've worked on, for example? Because I know you've... Uh, talked about this a long time ago that you worked on a, a clay face for uh, dc well, yeah yeah for the for the batman unlimited stuff yeah exactly yeah i've done i've done both marvel and dc stuff um and, and I, I like working on both i was always a big comic book guy i definitely kind of was more of a marvel guy um same but but you know i mean you know, DC has Batman, so of course, that's that's kind of that's kind of a big trump card. You're like, okay, all this is really good. Yeah, Batman. Okay. That's how my cousin is. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a big Batman fan, so I I would assume so. And you know, I love both respectively, but you know, Marvel's more my stance. But whenever there's a Batman thing, I'm always gonna I'm always gonna watch it or just oh, sure. see it. I mean, it's just it's crazy. So, but Dave. Like my dad said, thank you so much for taking your time out of your schedule to be on here and talk with us. We've been talking for like almost an hour and 30 minutes at this point. And I think that's just amazing. And I think, you know, keep up what you're doing and, you know, keep, hope you stay healthy and, you know, safe out there in this. Yeah, you guys too. I appreciate that. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much for watching this podcast yes. with the great Dave B. Mitchell here. 
uh, he has been amazing, and I hope you guys got a lot out of, <laughs> a lot Absolutely. informative out of him. I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did. Yeah, this is the dad we're talking yeah, about here. Yeah. That's because the gamer and then the dad. That's right. That's right. We didn't call him gamer dad or whatever, so that was not a title. <laughs> we we debated about titles before, so that was kind of like. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but guys, as I said, thank you so much for watching this podcast with Davey Mitchell, and I hope he answered a lot of your questions. There was some good questions in the chat, especially the, the Epic Games one, which he typed in four times, by the way. I just never thought of asking it because I was like, maybe he's talking about Fortnite, which is probably the obvious thing, like we said before. Uh, but we asked it anyway. Uh, but like I said, thank you so much, and I hope uh, you know goes on in the future or whatever, you know, holds for you or whatever projects you get, I'll be sure to look to around. And so, Absolutely. Even if it's like a small... Yeah, keep, keep doing what you're doing. I think it's great. Thanks, Thank Dave. you so much, Thank Dave. You, Dave. And Everybody guys, stay safe out there, huh? Yeah, of we'll course. Do. Of course. We'll but guys, have a great Monday night or day yeah. wherever you're at. Monday evening. <laughs> wherever you're at. Um, Thanks, guys, for watching. Yes. Thank you very much. Anything else? Fair wor words, Dave? <laughs> uh, just th thanks for all the support. And uh, again, just please stay healthy and happy and, and take care of yourself and your loved ones. And, and, uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, of course. Same here, man. Thank you so much, Dave. Again, take care of yourself. Be safe, man. Everybody, yes. thank you so much. Subscribe, like, tell everybody. Hit thanks the bell. Again. <laughs> See you guys soon. See you guys soon. Next Monday.